tonight. Worldwide support for Australian swim star Mac Horton vindicated as his drug cheap rival is banned for eight years. Full reaction tonight, but concerns Sun Yang's appeal might still see him swim at the Olympics. Teenage hero, the brave 14-year-old boy who leapt from his school bus to stop a woman being beaten. He tells us why he squared up to save her. New international travel bans announced in just the last hour. The impact of that and confirmation of Australia's first coronavirus infection not connected to China. The Ark, saved from the ashes. A wonderful celebration of all creatures great and small and the good humans who saved them as Mogo Zoo reopens. Prime property selling for a bargain, how to find the key and unlock Sydney's real estate secrets. And a thriller on the south coast as the Panthers and Eels turn it on for a special cause. Live from our Sydney headquarters, this is 7 News with Michael Usher. Good evening. It took a lot of courage to call out a cheat and now swim star Mac Horton has been vindicated. The authorities finding his rival Sun Yang of China is guilty of doping, banning him for eight years. The damning ruling of international sports judges sees Sun booted out of all competition, including the Olympics, but today said he would appeal vigorously. Mac Horton, before the sun rises, speaks for the first time about Sun's fall. Must feel an incredible sense of, I guess, vindication. Uh, I think regardless of the outcome, it was always going to be a statement to the world. Um, and my stance has always been about clean sport and uh, never about na nations or individuals. The bombshell dropped last night. The athlete is sanctioned with an eight-year Suspension. The Court of Arbitration for Sport finding no justification for Sun's team smashing vials of a blood sample during a drug test in China in 2018. His previous three month suspension for taking a prohibited substance factored in to the maximum possible ban. I was really surprised to be honest. I did think that um, he's probably going to get off. Are you relieved personally? Goes on. It will go on. Sun Yang's response, this is unfair. I firmly believe my innocence. I will definitely appeal to let more people know the truth. But the chances of winning an appeal are considered slim. Almost no chance of competing in Tokyo. Eight years, wow. That finishes Korea. Horton's feud with Sun began in Rio. I don't know if it's a rivalry between me and him, just me and athletes who have tested positive, I guess. <laughs> His podium protest at last year's World Championships prompting another swimmer to stand with him in solidarity. Scott here, getting a win. That man, Sun berated Duncan Scott, saying last night he fully respects and supports the decision. From another Brit who lost to Sun, James Guy, the truth always comes out. South African champion Chad Leclerc tweeting, drug cheats have no place in sport. Have you been a bit overwhelmed by the support you've received in the past 12 hours? Uh, yeah, but... Again, it's just, I'm just a guy still chasing the dream, so... Sun will keep his Olympic medals and world titles, having not tested positive at the time. Horton retaining the silver from last year's world championships. In 1972, Raylene Boyle was cheated out of Olympic gold and says Sun should be stripped of his. He's probably been a cheat right from the start and, yeah... Get rid of them all. His training camp in Adelaide now finished. Mac Horton returns home to Melbourne to continue preparing for his next visit here for the all-important selection trials in June. Assuming he does make the team, he'll head to Tokyo as the clear favourite in Sun's absence to defend his Olympic crown. Any thoughts on how it affects Tokyo? That's the preference now to let his actions do the talking. Alex Hart, 7 News. A 14-year-old boy is being praised by police for his extraordinary bravery after leaping from his school bus to stop a woman being beaten. The teenager, who risked his own safety to save her from the vicious attack, says he just did what anyone would do. Flanked by his mum, a teenage boy that showed bravery beyond his years. The 14-year-old, who he can't show due to his age, was on a bus at Riverston yesterday afternoon when he spotted a young woman being assaulted. When I looked out the bus window and I saw, you know, this, this guy hitting a woman, you know, I just knew, you know, that, that's not right. The teen demanded the bus driver stop and then ran towards danger, allegedly grabbed and choked by Paul Mapapangi, 18 years older and double his size. He told me to F off and that it's not my business 
And I said, mate, look, I'm not going anywhere unless you leave this girl alone. And then that's when he grabbed me by the throat. Despite the beating, he refused to budge, standing his ground, shielding the victim till police arrived. For a 14-year-old boy to intervene would have been very, very um, confronting, let alone an adult getting involved. Fantastic work by the young fella. Police charging Mapapangi with multiple counts of assault. The 32-year-old faced court here in Parramatta today. He will, for now, remain behind bars after bail was formally refused. As for the teenager, he's been recommended for a bravery commendation, but insists he's no hero. You know, I did what any person should do is and step in. Cameron Price, 7 News. The worsening coronavirus epidemic has prompted officials to raise the threat level and extend the travel ban to foreigners arriving from Iran. That decision follows Australia's first confirmed case unrelated to China. Raising the threat level to very high, the government has taken the extraordinary step of increasing travel restrictions in a bid to contain the outbreak. The travel advisory for Iran will be lifted to level four, which is do not travel. There's also raised travel advice for northern Italy, South Korea, Japan and Mongolia. There are 25 cases in Australia and now the first unrelated to China. A 63-year-old woman in quarantine on the Gold Coast after travelling from Iran. She's a highly intelligent, very sensible lady. As soon as she had her first symptom, she spoke to her manager. Passengers on a Qantas flight from Los Angeles today were kept on the plane as a hazmat crew assessed a sick traveller. Thankfully, he was cleared. More than 2,900 lives have been lost, 85,000 infected, most in China, which is being criticised for keeping secret for three weeks, the extent of the threat. Financial markets had their worst losses in a day since 2008, ahead of uncertainty about how bad the contagion could become. Here at the state's only coronavirus clinic at RPA, the small team has been overwhelmed with 300 people exhibiting symptoms of coronavirus. 220 have been tested, none positive. Officials here are asking anyone who thinks they may have the virus to call ahead so they can manage the influx. While some are stockpiling, fearing the worst, the US president claims media reports of potential doom are fake news. I think they're doing everything they can to instill fear in people and I think it's ridiculous. Brian Seymour, 7 News. There are growing tributes for a mother of two killed in that car crash at Epping yesterday. An 89-year-old man drove his Commodore into a mother's group sitting outside a cafe, injuring nine. 39-year-old Liz Albanoz was rushed to hospital but later died. There have now been calls to improve safety at the intersection. We'll be looking at what we can do to make the site itself even more safe, if that is possible. Police have not laid any charges, but those investigations are continuing. At the height of the shocking bushfires on New Year's Eve, staff at the Mogo Zoo had to make a life or death decision to not flee but stay and fight. And what they did was on show today for thousands of special guests as the zoo gets ready to welcome back the public. From the Macquarie Street bear pit to the lion's den of Mogo. Phoenix, you're so special. Oh, Phoenix, meaning rising from the ashes, just like Mogo Zoo. The best days of it are ahead of it because uh, if you hadn't heard of the Mogo Zoo before, you certainly have now. Today, the zoo is getting the lion's share of attention from some 2,000 special guests, including Defence Force members from here and overseas, the Governor-General and families and business owners who've lost everything in the catastrophic fires. Despite their own hardship, many helped the zoo reopen. What I'd like to do is to sort of meet with you all today, shake your hands, hug you and truly thank you. On New Year's Eve, as the fires threatened to engulf the zoo, staff had to decide whether to go or stay and protect their 200 animals. Despite the danger, every single animal was saved. You take on something extra when you're protecting something you love. And after his bushfire efforts, locals have been calling for bigger MP Andrew Constance to run for Prime Minister. Go for it. I know. No. I want to keep him in New South Wales. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Um, that's annoying, or uh, it's the last job I'd want on the planet. <laughs> and Peter Fegan's still in Bega for us this evening. Uh, Peter, hello to you. More celebrations for the South Coast tonight. Certainly is, much. The uh, Penrith Panthers and the Parramatta Eels uh, had an official trial match here this afternoon. The NRL visited the South Coast, and you can probably see that stage set up behind me. A bit of music playing there at the moment. Amy Shark, ARIA award-winning Australian pop sensation, will play a free concert here shortly. 
Now, just going back to the Mogo Zoo, the staff said that the official reopening to the public is tomorrow, and their message is that everyone is invited. Michael? It's a good invitation. It's an open invitation. Good on you, Peter. Peter Figgin there reporting tonight from Bega. An inner city underpass was doused in diesel this morning after a truck ruptured its fuel line. Around 7am, a B-double tanker mounted a median strip under the Sir John Young Crescent Bridge that was in Woolloomooloo, spilling around 100 litres of diesel petrol. The roads were blocked off while hazmat crews cleaned up the spill. And a man's body has been found in the Hunter region this morning in the middle of a road stabbed to death. The horrifying discovery was made by locals with the homicide squad now searching for a killer. Overgrown and unkempt, potentially hiding a bloody murder weapon. Detectives search for a knife that killed 27-year-old Jason Adams just before the sun came up this morning. He was left slumped in the middle of the road, locals calling for help after making the gruesome discovery. I didn't know what it was at first and then I saw it was a body bag and I thought it was... A bit scary and weird at the same time. Witnesses told detectives they heard a group arguing before the fight turned fatal. By the time paramedics arrived, he was already dead. It's very early phases of this investigation, um, but uh, yeah, we will. Um, uh, it's, it's certainly a solvable matter and uh, something that we expect to get a, uh, a good result on for the, the family of the victim. His devastated friends posting to social media, rest in peace, bro. Party hard up there with the boys. Sources have told Seven News the detectives are looking for a female attacker, possibly two. They were known to the victim as associates and had been at his house, which is just metres from where he died, in the hours before his death. We're certainly willing to hear from you and, and want to hear from you. Uh, we need information from the public on this matter. Laura Banks, Seven News. A cyclist is fighting for life after crashing his bike in Pimble this morning. The man in his 60s was riding down a hill on Monavale Road around 9am when he lost control. He was treated for head injuries before being taken to Royal North Shore Hospital in a critical condition. Police obviously are investigating. The federal opposition leader has blasted the National Party calling its members climate change deniers. Speaking at a country Labor conference, Mr Albanese says Australia will export coal for decades as he tries to sell his climate policy to regional Australia. A rallying cry to the Labor base, Anthony Albanese enters coal country. Hoping to persuade blue collar workers that their jobs are safe under his climate change policy. The truth is the global community isn't asking Australia to stop exporting coal. Taking aim at the Nationals. This lazy cynicism is shameful. They sell out their own communities and our own potential. That potential, a transition to not only renewable energy, but expanding traditional industries like forestry, rare earth mining and agriculture. Coal will remain an important part of the picture, but the hunter doesn't have all its eggs in the coal basket. The member for Hunter, Joel Fitzgibbon, who suffered a 9% swing against him at the last election, agrees. Anthony Albanese understands what we got right and what we got wrong at the last election. He knows that we need the support of our coal miners. Mr Albanese says one thing in Singleton, he says a different thing in Sydney. Keith Pitt, the newly appointed Resources Minister, says while he believes coal is here to stay, he wants the government to explore other options. Like lifting the ban on nuclear power. Nuclear is a mature technology. It's used in other countries around the world, in fact more than 20. Hoping his colleagues see eye to eye. Jennifer Beshwati, 7 News. We all wish for some extra time in the day. Well, this year we've been gifted an entire 24 hours. The leap year falling on a Saturday for the first time in 28 years and giving the economy a chance to claw back some losses. The chance of being born on February 29 is 1 in 1,461. Going on to have a child on the very same day, even more rare. This is 20-year-old Talia Fields' fifth actual birthday, marked by the birth of her son, who's yet to be named. I had a feeling it was going to happen the whole time. <laughs> Ivy Robinson, born this morning, is also a leapling. Our plan is to... Uh celebrate every year, but just every four years you get an extra big birthday. Three, two, one, bungee! Oh! Nick Lincoln jumping into his 10th official birthday. An extra special wedding day for brides like Cassie. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, so we thought, well, let's do it. <laughs> 
Sol, congratulations. The four-year calendar anomaly provided a bit of luck for these home buyers at auction. My first I didn't even know it was a leap year. Yeah. <laughs> the extra day is good news for the economy. Adding an estimated $5 billion to the local market value this financial quarter. But for homeowners thinking you may get a day off your mortgage repayments, think again. Your monthly repayments are unlikely to change because banks do take leap years into account. Something these new faces won't have to worry about, at least for a while. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. Well, tens of thousands of lined Oxford Street as excitement builds for Sydney's 42nd annual Mardi Gras and Sam Brett's at Hyde Park now. Sam, good evening to you. The parade's about to kick off. Michael, good evening. It is all happening here. I can tell you that this parade is set to kick off in about an hour's time. So 200 floats are set to make their way along Oxford Street all the way to uh, Moore Park. Around 12,000 people will be marching and around 300,000 people will be cheering them on before festivities will continue throughout the evening. Now this year's theme is What Matters, encouraging people to reflect on issues they think are worth fighting for. What matters to you guys? I guess equality, really. Uh, all inclusivity. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had to kind of fought for everything, and in these days, it's so nice to have our friends and family to come and march. Now, taking part in the parade this evening will be our emergency services, including police, ambulance, lifesavers, politicians, and no doubt a huge cheer and huge support for our rural fire service volunteers. This party is set to kick off well into the night. We've got performers such as Sam Smith and Kesha. Now, roads around here will be closed till at least around 4 o'clock this morning. There is a huge police presence here, about 1,000 police officers. But this is going to be a big, long party tonight, Michael. Indeed. All right. Sam Brett from Oxford Street. Thanks for that. Let's check the forecast now with Angie Asmus. Angie, good evening. Pretty good weather for everyone attending the parade tonight. Yeah, it certainly is, Michael. Clear skies today and the dream run continues tonight. Right now it is 24 degrees. Humidity isn't too uncomfortable, sitting on about 57% with a pleasant easterly breeze. Earlier it was a warm one, especially inland. Canamble reached 32 degrees today. Parks hit 31. That sea breeze did moderate temperatures on the coast, though 25 was the top at Newcastle. As winds tend more northerly from tomorrow, the next couple of days are going to be warmer, especially Monday when we'll see 30 plus degree heat stretch all the way to our coastal suburbs. That will keep the wet weather away for a couple of days. Come Tuesday though, we are going to see some more showers move through with light to moderate totals forecast across the state. More details on that change coming up soon, Michael. Look forward to that, Angie. Thank you. A brawl has spilled onto a busy city street after last night's bushfire charity match. Next, what caused rival footy fans to break out in violence? Plus, rock royalty meets the real thing. See Harry and Bon Jovi come together for a good cause. The shocking scenes why protesters were lighting fires on the streets of Paris. The moment a high-speed chase comes to a crashing halt on an LA highway. And the rising star of Australian cricket set to take on the country where he was born and raised. Victoria police are hunting two men involved in a wild street brawl after the AFL State of Origin charity match. Now, this video captured the brutality as the rival footy fans spilled onto Melbourne's busy Burke Street last night. One man was left unconscious on the ground after being repeatedly punched and kicked. Still coming to terms with the difficult details of his departure from the royal family, Prince Harry today took some time out to be a bit of a tourist in London. He took a photo outside the Abbey Road studios, made famous by the Beatles, and even helped a famous friend record a song inside. The rock star and the reluctant prince. At the studios, made famous by one of the world's biggest bands. This is, this is the Beatles control. Harry came to watch the Invictus Games Choir perform an anthem written by John Bon Jovi. Celebrity support for war veterans who remain unbroken. That was awesome. You didn't even need him. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> this was the Duke at his natural, comfortable best, generous with the hugs for his Invictus family. But can he sing too? This video released on the Sussex Royal Instagram page suggests he has a go 
One, two, three. But it stops short. We're told we'll find out when the single is released next month. I sent the letter to Harry with the song before it was released, and he thought it was a great idea. So then to see great ideas come to fruition, great. And they couldn't resist a chance to walk in the footsteps of music royalty across Abbey Road. Everyone, it seems, has a tourist bucket list. Even as Harry retreats to Canada, he will occasionally visit the UK. He can't avoid big spotlight moments like this, especially for the Invictus Games. But the Sussexes can't avoid the bad headlines either. One London paper said there was fury. Harry booked out an entire first-class train carriage to travel to Edinburgh this week. Another screamed Britain will be left to pay the Sussexes' security bill because Canada won't. These things aren't going away and they're the kind of questions that will keep uh, dogging them until we've got the, the decisions, until we know what's actually going to happen. From John Bon Jovi. I just want to give him a hug. In London, Hugh Whitfell, Seven News. Two shocking scenes in the heart of Paris now where an angry mob sparked several large fires causing a major train station to be evacuated. These pictures show flames jumping metres into the air and a column of smoke rising over buildings. What began as a protest outside a concert quickly spiralled into a full-blown riot with demonstrators even blocking firefighters from reaching that scene. Thirty people were arrested, 54 fined for participating in that protest. In a separate incident also in Paris, activists have clashed with police at an event dubbed the French Oscars. Hundreds gathered to rally against filmmaker and convicted child rapist Roman Polanski, setting off flares and chanting loudly. Despite the controversy, Polanski was awarded the prize for best director. A high-speed police chase has come to a crashing end on a Los Angeles highway. You can see the car slamming into another vehicle, spinning out of control, then hitting a pole. Police eventually caught up with the car, arresting two people, while three others were taken to hospital. It was a special Saturday afternoon on the south coast as Parramatta and Penrith lifted the spirits of a community affected by the bushfires. And Jim Wilson's here to tell us all about it. Jim, good evening to you. Good day, Michael. Tell you what, it went down to the wire in Bega. It did. It was a terrific afternoon, Michael, in Bega. Good, good evening again to you. Evening, everyone. Both clubs formed a guard of honour to pay tribute to our brave emergency personnel who put their lives on the line during the bushfire crisis. Soon in sport, we've got some highlights of a pretty entertaining game of rugby league in Bega, and we'll cross live to our league expert, Brett Kamali. Also ahead in sport, Marnus Labashain back in the country of his birth. will head to South Africa ahead of tonight's opening one-day international. And it got heated in the player tunnel and the Wanderers claim bragging rights against Sydney FC. Highlights from Cogra very soon. And also, the ashes on the water, some spectacular action. Sail GP, Australia versus Great Britain on our wonderful harbour this afternoon. It's pretty fierce, they're fast. Great pictures. Yeah, right, Jim, thank you. OK. Well, Sydney researchers have made a breakthrough for children suffering seizures. Next, the unlikely treatment that many of us drink every morning. Plus, pulled to safety, how more than a dozen fitness fanatics were rescued on a cliff. Cruise control, thousands of volunteer fireys get a much-needed break on the high seas. And the little boy who became a hero just for one day, how he transformed into the transformer of his dreams. Good story. That's next. A motorcyclist is in a critical condition after a crash in Sydney's southwest. A 23-year-old man was riding along Edgar Street in Condell Park around 1 today when he hit a car, causing him to crash into a nearby pole. The man was treated at the scene by paramedics before being taken to Liverpool Hospital while the driver of the car was uninjured. The Children's Hospital at Westmead has stumbled upon a remarkable treatment for a group of young patients with a rare neurological disorder. It's easy to source, perfectly safe and cheap. In fact, most of us already consume it every day in our cup of coffee. Yeah. Grace Maley's infectious smile gives no clue of her daily struggles. At four months old, a virus suddenly changed her development. We knew that something wasn't right because she couldn't sit up, so she wasn't reaching her milestones. She was diagnosed with a mutation in the ADCY5 gene, a movement disorder that prevents her from independently sitting or standing. It's been um, very up and down, an emotional roller coaster. One of the hardest impacts, seizures up to 10 times a day, until the family heard about an unlikely new treatment. 
caffeine. Grace can now feed herself a sandwich by herself and she can play Duplo and play with her brothers, so that's really wonderful. Other families are benefiting too under supervision at the Children's Hospital at Westmead. It is immensely satisfying and it is, it is thrilling to, uh, to, to be able to see a change in our patients. The caffeine treatment was in fact an accidental discovery made in France. A patient there with the condition stopped drinking his daily coffee and suddenly his symptoms became far worse. Older patients like Francesca Risi have followed his lead drinking straight espresso. It's amazing for us to see that something so simple can help her um, you know, put her hand up in class in time to answer a question. Exactly why it works is still a mystery. More research is needed. It gives us probably hope um, in more and more things to be discovered. If you'd like to help, see our website. Angie Asimus, 7 News. A downpour has stranded a group of fitness fanatics on the side of a cliff near Brisbane. 16 members of an F45 gym had to be rescued when rain made the trail they were on too slippery. They called in emergency services who abseiled them to safety, despite the cost authorities say the group did the right thing. Thousands of volunteer first responders who gave up their time during the bushfire crisis set sail on a much-deserved free cruise from the harbour tonight. The first voyage departs at midnight with those on board treated to top class entertainment and dining during the four day trip. The spectrum of the seas will then return to Sydney and do it all again in a week. They say if you're going to dream, dream big and that dream came true for a sick little American boy today who just wanted to be a superhero robot. His adoring fans lined the streets to say thanks to the 10-year-old for choosing to look after others as his once-in-a-lifetime wish. He spent 10 years fighting for his own life, but Gage Pike wanted to spend today saving other lives. Well, I really just wanted to save people. Thwarting a bank robbery. Come out of the bank with your hands up. Putting out a fire. <laughs> rescuing someone from a collapsing building. It's just a little scary. <laughs> but we got through. Showing a big heart as he recovers from open heart surgery. Gage suffers from neoplasms, abnormal tissue growths that often cause cancer. An ordinary life out of reach, he opted for an extraordinary one, asking the Make-A-Wish Foundation to be a robot for a day. I'm feeling great. A little tired too. <laughs> With help from the police, the fire department and even the mayor... Thank you for catching a bad guy. ...he was transformed into the transformer of his dreams. He's doing his superhero pose and waving to the crowd. And in that moment of being a superhero, um, you can't... There's, that money can't buy any of that. A fictional champion born from a real-life hero. He is my hero for everything that he's gone through and overcome and everything like that, I could not be more proud to call him my son. In the United States, Amelia Brace, 7 News. Australia's oldest air show pilot is in training for a prestigious event. Next, we're along for the ride with the 91-year-old high flyer. Plus, Sydney schools struggling. Could major changes be on the way for your kids? Hippo Hooray, the special name given to a special calf. And the run of sunshine set to roll on for the rest of the weekend. Your detailed Sunday outlook is coming up. The state government will rein back the power of school principals in a bid to improve student results and well-being. Education Minister Sarah Mitchell says the local schools' local decisions reforms have put too big a workload on principals. This is about improving a policy that has been well-intentioned but has had some unintended consequences. The Coalition introduced those reforms in 2012. Now, this next story is sure to set your spirits soaring. At 91, Borg Sorensen is believed to be the country's oldest air show pilot and he's in training to lead a flying formation at a prestigious aviation event. Even at 91, Borg Sorensen has a need... A need for speed. I got you ready. You never get sick of it. it. It's just one of these things, you know. You you start it, it takes a lifetime to give it up. He's believed to be Australia's oldest air show pilot, practicing flying formations with three youngsters in their seventies. They're all grey, grey-haired old buggers. They fly around. 
a Danish military veteran. He came here in 1956 as a speedway racer, living next to Moorabbin Airport. And I thought, well, I can do that. So I started flying. And you haven't stopped? No. He then restored a World War II tiger moth. Half a century on, his best friend. Do you love this old girl? Yeah, I do, yeah. It's part of the family. This seniors squadron will star in the Taib air show next weekend. And still doing formation flying at his age uh, is incredible. Borg does strict annual flying and medical tests. Some people say, God, you're still flying, so well, why shouldn't I? You can tell. It leaves this flying ace feeling ace. Do you still get a bit of a buzz? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you get up there, you know. You're in a different world. Nick McCallum, 7 News. The San Diego Zoo has named its adorable hippo calf Amache, and that means beautiful one. And the three-week-old certainly lived up to the moniker, the 45-kilo bub proving she's a star for the camera. The youngster, we're told, enjoys lying around in the water and cuddling close to mum. Sydney's real estate whisperer is sharing his tricks on how to snap up property gems right across Sydney, from the northern beaches to Auburn. What you need to be looking out for to maximise your investment. Don't miss that story soon here on 7 News. But first, Jim's back with sport. Jim, I'll tell you what, we're now set for the one days in South Africa. We are, Michael. Coming up, the Aussies want to inflict more pain on the Proteas. We'll hear from South African-born Martis Lavashane. Plus, we're live to Vega on what's been a wonderful day where the Eels and Panthers united in front of a sellout crowd. And what a backdrop as sailing's flying machines put on a show on our magnificent harbour. That's next. Welcome back everyone. The Eels and Panthers have played out an entertaining draw in their pre-season trial match in Bega. Penrith halfback Nathan Cleary crossed for a terrific individual try to open the scoring. Now his counterpart Mitchell Moses answered in style with a double of his own. Sione Fanua crashed over in the final minute to level the scores at 22 points all. But Jai Field's kick to win the game on the siren was push wide. Let's say live to our league expert, Brett Kamali in Bega. Brett, before we talk about the on-field action, that was a wonderful show of support from the Rugby League family for people and a community that's done it tough. Good evening to you. Yeah, good evening, Jim. Obviously, it was a huge celebration down here. Obviously, the boss of our game, Todd Greenberg, was here pre-game to, to invite and actually welcome and say thank you to all the local community and the fire savers who have been here very, very bravely looking after this community. So it was a great uh, show of generosity from the NRL to be here. They've been here for a number of days, the players. Great support. Uh, when I walked inside the gate, Jim, it sort of had hair on the back of your necks, was standing up. Very, very warm mm. environment and a, and a great celebration happening post-game outside for the, with the concert. Yeah, it was a nice guard of honour there. We saw the Premier and also Shane Fitzsimmons with his manly uh, jersey on. Good on you, Shane. He loves the Seagulls. Let's talk on field. Brad Arthur and the Eels coaching staff had their own vantage spot beside the scoreboard. It wasn't a bad game, was it? And Nathan Cleary and Mitch Moses were pretty impressive. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, the two number sevens went to battle and they did a, certainly a terrific job. Nathan Cleary a lot bigger than when he was last year. And I look forward to seeing how Mitchell yeah, Moses continue four, develops. Four, He's four, had three four, to four months four, under four, Andrew four, Johns and it'll be certainly three, great to see him as he goes forward over the next 12 to 18 months with him. You were just having a look at some of the action here with Cleary and also Moses. Um, that's good signs. I know we're only in February, but good signs for the season ahead, isn't it? Hopefully it's back. Great, great yeah, great signs, I think, for both sides here. I think they both would walk away from this game. Yes, it was 22 all at the end of the game, but I think both sides showed a lot of praise. And key players, Jim, I thought, played very, very good for both sides. Jim, it's good to have you back on board with our seven news team for season 2020 and a great afternoon for rugby league. Well done to the Eels and also to the Panthers and to the NRL for those uh, people in need in Bega. Thanks to Brett Kamali live there in Bega. Tonight's one-day series opener in South Africa will be extra special for Marnus Labashane. The Aussie star will play his first match in the country. He spent the first 10 years of his All life right. before moving to Australia and Labashane yeah. is keen to impress. Obviously that role at number four is something that I you know, want to make sure I continue to improve and, and, and make that sort of a spot that I can continue to be successful in. Marlis will have good support. Over 20 family and friends are expected to attend the next two matches. Victoria pulled off a stunning comeback to beat the All-Stars by 46 points in the AFL's big match at Marvel Stadium last night in Melbourne. Over 51,000 fans watched the All-Stars race to a 30-point lead midway through the third quarter before the Vicks found their groove thanks to GWS stars Josh Kelly and Toby Green. Saab kept on running. The Vicks are turning it on. It's a display finished off by Toby Green. 
Swans forward Tom Papley booted five goals in the Big V's 154 to 108 victory. Dustin Martin was named best player on the ground. Well, GWS best and fairest winner from last year, Tim Taranto is racing the clock to be fit for round one of the Premiership season. After dislocating his shoulder in today's pre-season match against the Swans at Blacktown, Taranto left the field in the first quarter and will have scans this week to assess the damage. The carnage continue with Aaliyah, Aaliyah and Harry Himmelberg coming together in a heavy collision. The Sydney Derby boiled over last night as the Wanderers claimed bragging rights with a 1-0 victory over Sydney FC. Fans let off flares in a goalless first half before Mitch Duke headed home the match winner in the 81st minute. Daniel Georgievsky was red carded minutes later for a brain explosion. Oh, lash out by Georgievsky and it caught the face of young Tilio and Georgievsky's in real bomber here I fancy. After initially being shown a yellow card, the VAR upgraded to red post-match. A fired-up Sky Blues coach Steve Corica confronted Jeff Georgievsky in the tunnel. The Newcastle Jets clash with Perth Glory got off to a stunning start. Top ball's down. Nikolai Topol Stanley's stunning strike gave the Jets the early lead, but the glory level from the penalty spot, it remains one all midway through the second half. The Waratahs broke through for their first win of the Super Rugby season last night, beating the Lions 29-17 at Bankwest Stadium. Captain Rob Simmons was on the receiving end of some early punishment before he was forced off with an ankle injury. Even without the skipper, the Tars were too strong. They charged towards the line. The win ends the Waratahs' three-game losing streak. Ash Barty is out of the Qatar Open after losing a three-set semi-final battle with long-time rival Petra Kvitova. After dropping the first set, the Aussie world number one produced some stunning shot-making to force a decider, but couldn't deny Kvitova from winning the third 6-4. It's Barty's first loss to the Czech in their last five meetings. Queensland cult horse Alligator Blood has taken out the Group 1 Australian Guineas at Flemington this afternoon. Been billed as a match race against Catalyst, but only Alligator Blood was in the finish. Here are the closing stages. 100 metres to go. His big heart pounding. He's clear. He wins. Alligator Blood won it by a length. At Ramwick, hot favourite Flip was upstaged by Probabil in the Group 1 surround stakes, but punters took great delight as Tiako Shark, part owned by Cronulla champion Paul Gallen, came from behind to take out the chipping Norton Stakes. Well done to Gal. Team Australia fell just short of victory at the Sale GP on Sydney Harbour. After two days of thrilling racing, the Aussies had to beat Team Great Britain in the final match race, but were no match for the Brits, with four-time Olympic gold medalist Ben Ainsley at the helm. Coming up towards the line, and it's Great Britain and Ben Ainsley who take the first victory of 2020. Gee, it's good action. This next event is in San Francisco in May. Olympic swimming gold medalists Ian Thorpe and Liesl Jones have joined water polo star Holly Lincoln-Smith as special guests at a community night in Armidale. It's all part of the Olympics Unleashed program, which takes athletes into Australian communities to inspire and motivate students. We wanted to show communities that Olympians, you know, we care about them. We come from communities like this and where we can show our support, we're happy that we can do it. Good to see Optus backing this. Great to see the Thorpedo and Liesl also in Armadale. The trio also added their support to a drought relief fundraiser in the town. So from Armadale down to Bega, we've got a netball fundraiser tomorrow. Our athletes are uniting for those who have done a pretty tough. They are. That mm. was a jam-packed break of sport. There was, there a, was a fair bit there, wasn't there? <laughs> a plethora. A plethora. It's a good plethora. A feast. Good on you, Jim. <laughs> good Thank on you, mate. You. Okay. Well, he's Sydney's real estate whisperer. His full-time job finding property gems across the city for budding investors. And tonight, he's sharing his secrets for scouting cheap real estate. For Stephen McCormack, this is property number nine, a passion now making real money. I bought it for 571000 It's a great deal being on uh, in the heart of the northern beaches. I know that all of the other properties around the area are selling for around 700000 Instant equity to be found all over Sydney. Those deals are still out there in 2020 and even more so this year than what there has been in the previous years because there's just so much opportunity. 
Nathan Birch has become Sydney's apparent property whisperer, a knack for scouting underpriced real estate for customers with some tips for free. There's three elements that I'll look at. One's buying at below market value, so there's already equity from day one and also minimises risk. I want to make sure there's upside for capital growth, so buying it in good locations and making sure that we've got strong cash flow so it doesn't eat into your lifestyle. So where are these bargains? Auburn, this two-bedroom unit. 315000 revaluation recently at $442,000. This apartment in Toongabby for 358000 Nothing for sale in Toongabby for under $500,000. Property in Penrith for under $230,000. Its current value at least 320000 And in Girraween, Nathan snapped up this unit for $360,000. Now... Nothing under 500000 So even if you buy a property that's slightly negative, then you're still in front because you know that you can reach into that equity and use it to secure a next purchase. A property bug that's contagious, providing you know where to look. Amber Laidler, 7 News. Well, coming up, Angie Asmus has the forecast. Angie, good evening again. It is getting warmer. Sure is, Michael. Temperatures will climb over the next couple of days, reaching the mid-30s in the city by Monday. The seven-day forecast is next. Checking your food's perfect from the inside out. High-tech testing for safety and flavour. The Consumer Investigation, 7 News, Monday. Tonight's 7 News headlines. Mac Horton says he just wants swimming to be a clean sport after his rival, China Sun Yang, was banned for eight years over doping. Police appraising the selfless bravery of a teenage boy who leapt from his school bus to save a woman being beaten. Australia's foreign travel ban has been extended to include Iran as fears over the coronavirus epidemic deepen and tens of thousands are lining city streets for Sydney's annual Mardi Gras celebrations. Now Angie's back with Sydney's weather. Angie, tomorrow is sounding pretty perfect. It sure is, Michael. Sunny and warm for the first official day of autumn tomorrow, much like today. In fact, when we saw a top of 26.2 degrees in the CBD just before 2.30 this afternoon, that followed a low of 19.3, which has pretty well been the trend for several days now, so fairly warm. Across the suburbs, Terry Hills reached a top of 25 degrees, so 26 at Manly. Fair bit warmer at the airport with a top of 29. Fairfield hit 27. It was a pleasant day at Katoomba, 24 the top there. From the satellite we have a weak high pressure ridge extending along the New South Wales coastline so that will keep the fine weather rolling right throughout the weekend. What we're watching next is a cold front that won't impact us too much tomorrow but it is expected to sweep across the southern half of the coastline on Monday so temperatures will drop and we're also likely to see some showers in its wake during the working week. Tomorrow's capitals Brisbane heading for a fine day top of 31 degrees, Canberra heating up to 32 degrees. That heat also set to reach Melbourne. 32 followed by a late shower. Hobart 25 degrees with late showers as well. Adelaide may see a light shower develop during the afternoon following a top of 29. Perth will be partly cloudy and 31 and it's a stormy 32 again for Darwin. Statewide some pretty intense heat is starting to build inland and it's on its way to the coast as well. Burke to reach 39 degrees tomorrow. 36 further south at Wagga Wagga. 31 at Newcastle. So even warm on the coast. Some southern centres will be windy, including the snowy mountains, but no sign of any rain just yet. The clear skies roll on across Sydney as well tomorrow. In fact, it will be a pretty warm one, a top of 27 degrees on the beach at Mona Vale, 28 for Mascot, warmer in our west, 31 the forecast top for Camden, and Richmond will be the warmest at 33. On the coast, winds will swing around to the north tomorrow. They'll reach 15 to 20 knots, so a little bit stronger than we saw today. Still no warnings in place, though. For the city, similar conditions expected overnight, dipping to 19 degrees once again. Humidity will be quite high tomorrow, particularly in the morning, and we are headed for a top of 28 degrees. Now, for the first week of autumn, a little bit of everything here. The run of sunshine continues on Monday. Quite warm, in fact. 35 degrees in the city and 38 in our west. Then some light showers are going to start developing from Tuesday. They'll be uh, generally just a couple of millimetres most days. Heaviest on Wednesday, 10 to 15 millimetres forecast. But the rest of the weekend certainly looking very nice indeed, Jim and Michael. Spot on. Good forecast. All right, yep, Angie. like it. Thank you for that. And that is 7 News for this Saturday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. And Weekend Sunrise, of course, is back from 7am. I'm Michael Asher from all the team here. Thank you so much for your company. Have a terrific Saturday night. Bye.